Hey guys, uh, so I thought I would just do a little haul video. Um, I did buy a few books today. Well, more than a few, um, but not too, too many. And um, I have acquired other books in the meantime that I haven't been hauling on my channel, uh, but that's just sort of out of laziness. But I decided today I, um, I enjoy talking with you all and chatting with you all, so I thought I would just make a little video about the books that I bought, because I'm quite excited about some of them. So I made a, a little impromptu trip to uh, the Bookshop Incorporated, which is a little used and new bookstore over in Boone, Iowa, um, which is like 10-15 minutes from where I live. It's a much smaller town than Ames. Um, it has much more of a, uh, of a Boonies feel, um, even though I know that there are uh, many more fathoms to the boondocks of Iowa, <laughs> but still, um, it is quite a small town, but it has this lovely, uh, used bookstore. They have a great selection, the people who work there are super nice, you can, um, it sort of works like a book, book exchange, you can, um, if you buy books, you can, uh, return them if you want, uh, for store credit, if you, uh, decide you don't want to read them, or, uh, you know, uh, read them and want to just get rid of them. And another fun thing that I got there, um, the cashier gave me this little, uh, pamphlet sort of thing, and it's just a, it's a, it's all about, it has a list of all of the independent bookstores, uh, in a bunch of Midwestern states, basically. Um, so this is just, the brown here is just a list, a listing of those, of those bookstores, and so, um, we have, of course, Iowa, uh, Illinois, Kansas, uh, Minnesota, Missouri, uh, Montana, Wisconsin, uh, South Dakota, Nebraska, and North Dakota. Um, and yeah, so it's just all the all the indie bookstores that are in those places. And then there's like a an adorable map of uh, independent bookstores in the Midwest. Um, so yeah, uh, that was kind of nice. I really like that, and um, I definitely want to try to visit some more of these. But it's just cool that I know of these store's existence, and I can go on some road trips to some of them, um, and get more books that I don't need. <laughs> but, um, anyway, uh, I am really excited about the books that I bought, so I will, uh, get on to those. So, first, I, I bought, um, I mentioned, uh, in my last video that I had just read Children of Dune, and, uh, I didn't own the last three books in the Dune saga. There are six books, and I own the first three. Um, and once you know it, I found all three of the books in the Dune Saga that I do not own. Um, so we have uh, the fourth book, God Emperor of Dune, we have uh, Heretics of Dune, the fifth book, and the last book, uh, Chapter House Dune. Uh, there was supposed to be a seventh book in the Dune Saga, but unfortunately uh, Frank Herbert died before he could finish it. And uh, his son Brian Herbert did write a couple of novels that are supposed to sort of finish up the series, but uh, I have heard nothing positive about those, so I'm uh, gonna steer clear of those and just content myself with what Frank Herbert wrote. Um, so yeah, I'm super excited to have these because I really want to finish reading the series. And there may or may not be a certain um, event upcoming on booktube involving the entire Dune saga. Just wink wink, nudge nudge. Um, anyway, on to the other books. Uh, so first uh, is What to Listen For in Music by Aaron Copeland. And um, this is one of those fun things that happens in bookstores sometimes, where you just see uh, a book that you've never heard of before and you know nothing about, but you see the title and you read the back cover and you know that it is a book you will want to read. Um, and so yeah, Aaron Copeland was, uh, I believe, a very, uh, very famous pianist and composer. And uh, yeah, this is just a very basic overview of uh, the basic components of music and sort of teaching you uh, how to listen to music. So, you know, he goes through, you know, what is rhythm, melody, um, musical texture, um, this is, he has a chapter on opera, which I probably, um, considering that I've read an entire book on opera, I may be a bit redundant, but I will definitely still have fun reading it. Um, but yeah, I, I, the other parts of this I know will be very useful to me, because I've always, um, felt a bit musically illiterate. Um, I did take a class on music in college, uh, in my freshman year of college, and I did learn a lot in that class. Um, but even so, I've always sort of felt like a bit of a dunce. I never, I never learned how to play an instrument. Um, I certainly never, well, I did, I wasn't a chorus for a while, but I shouldn't have been. I had a terrible voice. Um, uh, and, uh, I never took music classes of any sort. So, uh, I've always just felt a bit illiterate when it comes to music. So, um, I hope perhaps this will 
um, start me on my way to remedying that. And next is the portable Nietzsche. Uh, this is edited and translated by Walter Kaufman. Um, so this is like the exact opposite of the Aaron Copeland, uh, because I very much love Nietzsche and, uh, love his writing, love his, well, I love parts of his philosophy, not all of it, but parts of it. And yeah, so this is just a collection of a, of a lot of his writings. So we have, um, Twilight of the Idols, uh, The Antichrist, uh, Nietzsche, Nietzsche contra Wagner, uh, his book about, his book, uh, criticizing Va Richard Wagner, and, uh, Thus Spoke Zarathustra. Uh, and in addition to those, it has a lot of sort of, um, lesser known writings of Nietzsche, so it has some of his letters, and it has, uh, other, uh, sort of small snippets, and I'm not sure exactly what they're taken from, but, you know, there's like a, a piece here called Notes About Wagner, um, which is like a, only a page long, there's, um, a little piece called On Ethics, and just other little pieces that are just titled Notes that have no particular subject, and um, I'm not sure exactly what those are taken from, whether they're from like his notebooks or letters or diaries or whatever, but anyway, I just, I thought that it would be cool to um, uh, look into some of Nietzsche's perhaps lesser known works that seem to be in here, uh, because, um, you know, I like his, his major works that I've read, uh, but it's nice to sort of explore the lesser-known works of certain authors. So, uh, yeah, this was a good find. Next up is, uh, Primitive Mythology by Joseph Campbell. Um, I have wanted to read Joseph Campbell for quite some time. I've always found his ideas about, uh, the monomyth very interesting. This idea that there are myths that sort of, um, subconsciously appeal to all humans, regardless of culture or background. Um, and so this is actually the first book in a series on mythology, and, um, so this is about mythology from, like, very, very old human cultures, so, like, yeah, agriculture, probably, so, um, uh, just to give you an idea of what's in here from the table of contents, um, toward a natural history of the gods and heroes, um, uh, that's the, the title of the prologue, uh, part one is called The Psychology of Myth, um, Part two is called The Mythology of Primitive Planters. Uh, part three is The Mythology of Primitive Hunters. And part four is The Archaeology of Myth. Um, so yeah, that should be super interesting. And uh, I, I love myths, so this, that should be interesting. Um, next is uh, I Will Fight No More Forever, an epic, or sorry, Chief Joseph and the Ned's Purse War uh, by Meryl D. Beale. This is a uh, biography of Chief Joseph. Uh, who uh, was a, a leader of the Nez Perce Nation of Native Americans, uh, who very famously fought a uh, war with the United States military uh, in the late 1800s. It was one of the last of the uh, plain, of the Indians' wars. Um, and uh, essentially the United States attacked uh, Chief Joseph's band of the Nez Perce, um, and ne uh, Chief Joseph decided in the wake of that to try to... Um, uplift his people and take them to Canada to safety, uh, but the United States military chased him and chased him, and within 30 miles of the Canadian border, he, uh, and the Nez Perce were caught and, um, and surrendered. Um, and, uh, yeah, I've always been very interested in, uh, Chief Joseph. I actually wrote a paper about him in high school, um, which I don't remember that much from. I don't remember much of what I learned about him while writing that paper, uh, which is kind of sad, so it will be really nice to revisit, um, this man's life, because he's, he's a fascinating guy, I think. Um, so, yeah. And lastly is probably the find of the day. Um, so this is, um, Abraham Lincoln by Carl Sandburg. This is a really big one-volume biography of Abra Abraham Lincoln. And, um, I, I was really surprised when I saw this. Um, Steve Donahue did a video a long time ago, um, called, uh, A Civil War Starter Kit, um, where he just gave them books to start with if you want to start reading about the Civil War. And one part of that video was, uh, biographies of Abraham Lincoln, because obviously he was very important in the Civil War. Um, and the, uh, standard for Abraham Lincoln biographies that Steve... Uh, names in that is this biography, but Steve also said that the that this biography is actually out of print and so kind of hard to come by. Um, so that's why I was so surprised to find it, and um, but really happy because I 
Um, I, I wanted uh, lately to try to get my hands on and read a biography of Abraham Lincoln because I've been getting um, much more interested in the Civil War lately. I uh, recently watched the uh, Ken Burns documentary actually twice, <laughs> uh, and I also listened to a um, uh, an extended interview on YouTube with Shelby Foote, the author of the great three-volume history of the Civil War, which I think I would also like to read at some point. Um, but yeah, so just a nice crop of books. Um, uh, as always, I want to hear your thoughts if you have any, and I hope you're all having a nice Tuesday, and uh, I will talk to you all later. Bye, guys.